Getting ready to buy or sell a home in 30, 60, or 90 days? Then check out BundleSelect.com to find out how you could save 20% or more on your entire transaction. Save on real estate, lending, and title. With BundleSelect.com, technology and a personal concierge are at your service to save you time and money. Bundle Select's hand-picked team of experts will compete for your business, so you'll save thousands of dollars by bundling all of these services. BundleSelect.com gives you all the control, including using your own realtor. I'm Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, and I have been on the radio educating consumers for years. By bundling services like real estate, lending, and title, you could save tens of thousands of dollars. Act now, and this new model could save you money on your move, lower your interest rate, or cover your closing costs. Visit BundleSelect.com. That's BundleSelect.com. The estimated minimum savings are based on a comparison with the national average. Individual results may vary, and the estimated savings are not guaranteed. Bundle Select Inc. is a licensed real estate broker. California Bureau of Real Estate Broker. License number 0046902. Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, Here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Good afternoon. Welcome in. Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you again for following the show. Those that are uh, following us on Facebook, tuning in, appreciate the feedback and the correspondence back and forth. Just for a quick update as we roll through the week, we are on Tuesday. Today the topic is going to be about... What's going to be happening with real estate and blockchain, including title and escrow? So you've been hearing a lot about that. We're going to cover that and a few other things as well. Mostly going to try to get through that topic. Before we get started, just a reminder, if you um, would like to follow the show, if you're missing some of these shows, we certainly do the live feeds three days a week, and then these are going to the podcast. So if you want more information about the podcast, go to... Um, Real Estate Radio Live, reradiolive.com, and you could uh, go to the website, download, get the podcast there, or you could go to iTunes and just type in Real Estate Radio Live, and you could get that information for the podcast there as well. The focus is always the same here for the show, ladies and gentlemen, is education and information. And we work really hard to have a lot of great information, data, guests, uh, on an ongoing basis, you'll notice the studio, the content, the information, the guests that we're going to have. We continue to upgrade the delivery, what we get to you, the consumer, to better educate you. You hear me talk about this all the time because it's really important, and that is we want to be a show and a venue for you to educate and inform yourself and gather some information so that when you make these decisions on your real estate in and around real estate, You feel like you're more comfortable, you're better prepared, and you have a group of people you could trust, and that's certainly us. And that's our main objective. You'll hear me say this a lot. I don't want to be one of these shows, um, and again, there's thousands of different shows out there, podcasts, radio shows. My feeling is that the the reason I keep this different and I really try to focus on that is, is that I don't want this to be something that is obvious every day. In other words, I don't want to just give you the information, an update, a real estate update, a market update, a mortgage update, a rate update. You could get those online. You could get a lot of this information as an update online. You could get that every single day. What we work really hard here at Real Estate Radio Live to do is provide you with information and an educational show and different aspects to really help you, engage you, and hopefully get you thinking, boy, I didn't know that. And now that I understand this better, when I go to make this decision, I feel like I'll be more wise. I'll make a more educated decision. These are the types of things that I strive for, that we strive for on Real Estate Radio Live is to keep the content fresh, keep it new, keep it on the cutting edge of what's going on in the real estate industry. And that's one of the reasons we're talking about blockchain today and how it will affect the real estate market. Before we get started, just a reminder again, once again, tomorrow we have Bill Benton on, who is going to be talking about reverse mortgages, and then Thursday we have Jack Russo back in our series about starting something new in Silicon Valley. That's been going on for, gosh, I think this is uh, nine, either nine or ten, 
And uh, real excited about that series because we are educating the consumers on entrepreneurship, starting companies. From start, really from start to finish, Jack has taken us through and will continue to do that. How do you start a company? How do you form a company? What are the legalities of it? How do you gain partners, advisors? How do you raise money? We're covering all that stuff because Silicon Valley is here, the hotbed of the startup world for sure. All right, so let me jump in and talk a little bit about, uh, I'm going to reference some of my notes here on uh, what's going to happen with real estate and blockchain, and that's including title and escrow. What I'm going to try to do is cover here the current situation, uh, the blockchain initiatives, and then you know where the world's going, how is this going to look? How does it look now? How might it look in the next couple of years? How might it look in the next you know five to ten years? So as we speak right now, you've heard me talk about this many times. It's you can't go in any industry from crawling to an all-out sprint. You can't go from just basically walking or crawling in an industry and then go from that to sprint. Let me explain myself. Right now in the real estate industry, in the lending industry in general, in title and escrow, we are what I would consider when it comes to technology and innovation, we are kind of crawling, maybe walking, partially upright. We're kind of helping ourselves to get up off the ground and start walking. And I'm serious. I'm in this industry as well. It, it, it's, it, we're way behind. We're lagging behind. Now we're trying to play catch up. There's a lot of companies that are coming into this space that are spending a lot of money that are making some headway and making some progress. And quite frankly, many of the traditional companies had better take notice and try to figure out how they adjust and change their models to succeed. And I, and I really believe that. I really do, especially over the next couple of years. So the reason why, in my opinion, we're crawling and maybe barely walking right now in the industry is when you think about technology and specifically in real estate, for me, the only thing that we've done to change anything that has improved the customer experience in relationship to that transaction over the last several decades is DocuSign. Wonderful feature, right? You're able to electronically sign stuff. You're able to pass a contract to clients that are in different areas of the United States, different locations. They could e-sign. They could DocuSign, get it back, look at those documents, legally sign them, get them back. And, and that's, that's great. But that is the only thing, that is the only customer convenience that's really changed over the last several years. Yeah, consumers have more information from Zillow. They have more information online. Consumers now could readily go and they have a better idea of schools and locations and neighborhoods and crime and all that. What I mean is what has the industry done, not, not online, but what has the industry done to better facilitate and add technology for to improve the consumer experience? And it has been little or none. It has been little or none. So along comes... The conversation, and you're hearing a lot about blockchain, cryptocurrency, what is this going to be? What is this going to look like? You're already seeing some of these transactions crop up. You're seeing some from time to time. You'll see an article in a paper that will show, you know, the first transaction happened in um, cryptocurrency. So someone just in, in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, someone just made a transaction in real estate. You were, I think we saw... A listing go on the market recently. I think it was right here in the Bay Area. It might have been in Oakland. Uh, I'm not sure. But they listed the property, and they made mention that the only way they're going to sell it is if someone buys it with Bitcoin or cryptocurrency transactions. So it's starting to happen. We're starting to see some of this come up. It'll take a while. And let me just kind of finish up and clear the deck what I meant about, you know, you have to walk before you sprint. We're not going to go from what we're doing today with basically DocuSign all the way to cryptocurrency and blockchain over the next 12 to 18 months. It's just not going to happen. Now, what will happen is you'll see some innovation. You'll see more and more people using this technology. You'll see people adapting it. You'll see companies coming in, and I'm going to go through a list of companies that are excelling right now in cryptocurrency and the blockchain technology. So you'll see transactions, you'll see some progress over time, but we cannot go from crawling, walking with DocuSign and all of a sudden think that everybody's going to be going through cryptocurrency and blockchain technology for their transactions. It's just not going to happen. So what can we expect here in the, in the near future? What can we expect over the next, say, 12 to 18 months when it comes to 
blockchain and some of this cryptocurrency? Well, I think what we could expect is a few more transactions. We'll see several more companies come into play. I'll go through a list of companies that are players in the market right now. And But we first have to understand a little bit about some of the problems, the biggest problems in real estate today. And this article cites, I thought this was a very good article written on blockchain and the, and the coming technology and, and the cryptocurrency. But the three problems they talk about in this article are, they refer to the, the problems in real estate today that are faced with is fragmentation, illiquidity, and they call it elitism. Fragmentation, illiquidity, and they call it elitism. And so we'll kind of cover each one of those three in the show today. So fragmentation, I would agree 100%. On all these, uh, I've said this for the last several years, this industry is very, very fragmented. It's moving in different directions. You have real estate doing one thing, lending doing another thing, title and escrow doing another thing. And even though we all work together in the same industry, we're all working separately against each other in many different ways. And certainly, we're not working together for the better of the consumer, in my opinion, right now, not 100%. And that's going to change in the near future as well. So the fragmentation of the industry is certainly there. I would agree 100%. But it's a big, big industry. When you look at the money being spent, the transactions, and we're not even talking about commercial right now. I'm just talking about residential real estate. When you get into the commercial, it's in the trillions of dollars. So this is a huge, huge industry that is a mover. I mean, the housing industry moves, the real estate, the commercial It moves the needle when it comes to the economic factors that go on in the economy. It's it's big. Everybody has to be paying attention to this. And so the industry is fragmented for sure. That's what we know. It is fragmented for sure. A lot of liquidity. There's a lot of problems to solve in this industry. And there's a lot of new startups that are trying to do that. And they're trying to do that for sure. So cryptocurrency, some of the property startups that are getting in the marketplace. I'm not going to really go through a bunch of them, but there's. I'll read a few of the names that are playing a part in the industry right now and will probably play a part in the coming future, although there's going to be several others that are going to be jumping into this marketplace too. So they have Trust Token is one. Volex is another one. Estate Association. Atlant is another one. Uh, Chroma Way. There's Blockchain. Brick Block, Proppy, Smart RE, Salt Lending, Block Five. That's just to name a few of a lot of these startups that are spending a lot of money on cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. So to summarize this kind of in the first stage of, of what I want to talk about today is I wanted to quickly kind of discuss most of us have, if we're in this industry or we've had a transaction recently and we're a consumer listening to this, if you're a consumer, pay special attention to this show and what's going on today, and then hopefully you'll do that going forward because this is going to be an incredible educational process for you. We're going to detail step-by-step what's going on in the industry, what kind of changes can you expect, and what kind of teams and what people are you going to be working with with these transactions as this evolves. So right now as we stand, there's a lot of companies coming into the market. Most of us would agree with that. It's crowded. It's confusing. I think most consumers would say, you know, I I don't want anything to do with cryptocurrency and blockchain. I have too much to learn. My smartphone, just to navigate through that, it's tough enough. So the challenge we have in front of us is that this is coming at the consumers really, really fast. All this stuff is coming fast. You're reading about every day. There's hundreds of millions of dollars being pumped into the market with these startup companies that are trying to get into the different industries. And real estate is one for sure that's going to be right in the thick of things. And they'll be that way going for the next couple of years. So we have the startups. We have a lot of information about this. We have a couple of transactions that are taking place. So we have to, you know, you ask yourself, how do you, if you see this, I mean, I could, personally, I could picture this. I really can in my mind already where it's going. And I think if you, there's so many, so many hurdles still, most of us would agree if you understand this industry with regulation, with compliance, 
legal issues that we weren't going to get into today. And maybe I'll talk to Jack a little bit about this on a side note, the attorney, about the legal complications. Because you could see this until it really gets ironed out. Can you imagine if you do a transaction with cryptocurrency or blockchain and there's a problem or there's some fraud associated with it or was there really a valid you know, title in escrow or um, where did this money really come from? We thought it came from a good source, but is it money laundering? I mean, there's a lot of things that are going to go into this. So don't think that this is going to happen overnight, but I could see a day, and I don't know if it's 10 years from now, 15 years from now, from 20 years from now, but I could see a day when all this, when most of these transactions are peer-to-peer. I really can. You and I sitting across the table or on a conference call or in front of each other, and we decide to do a transaction in real estate, we both log in to our crypto or blockchain accounts, and we conduct a transaction amongst each other with no third parties involved. So we sign into our blockchain account, the virtual account, and there's a piece of property listed. And I'm going to legally show that property being turned over to this person. And in exchange for that, that property will not be released electronically until that money is in my account, number one. And number two, there's clear title, and they understand that. So those, I could see a day when that happens. Now, some people in the industry might would say, well, that'll never happen, but it will happen. And it'll take time. And we're not going to go, again, from crawling and walking to blockchain and crypto. It's just not going to happen that way. It's going to take a few steps. All right, here's what I'm doing. I'm going to take a quick break, and I'm going to come back and finish up talking a little bit more about blockchain, how it's going to affect real estate, and we'll get more into the title and escrow and lending side when I come back. This is Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. We'll be back in just a minute. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Getting ready to buy or sell a home in 30, 60, or 90 days? Then check out BundleSelect.com to find out how you could save 20% or more on your entire transaction. Save on real estate, lending, and title. With BundleSelect.com, technology and a personal concierge are at your service to save you time and money. Bundle Select's hand-picked team of experts will compete for your business, so you'll save thousands of dollars by bundling all of these services. BundleSelect.com gives you all the control, including using your own realtor. I'm Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live, and I have been on the radio educating consumers for years. By bundling services like real estate, lending, and title, you could save tens of thousands of dollars. Act now, and this new model could save you money on your move, lower your interest rate, or cover your closing costs. Visit BundleSelect.com. That's BundleSelect.com. The estimated minimum savings are based on a comparison with a national average. Individual results may vary, and the estimated savings are not guaranteed. Bundle Select Inc. is a licensed real estate broker. California Bureau of Real Estate Broker. License number 00466902. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's topic or guests, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you for those that are following us on Facebook. Appreciate it very much. Uh, we'll continue to work hard to provide you, the consumer, with more education and information so that helps you make wise decisions in and around your real estate. Today we're talking about blockchain technology, how it will affect the real estate world, lending, title, and escrow. The first part of the show, I talked a little bit about the history of it, where we are now, what we could expect. Now I want to talk a little bit about the potential challenges in implementing this type of technology and why it's going to take a while. And then we're going to talk about the reality of this business and how it's all going to change. And for me, I enjoy the thought about the futuristic thinking. I understand that things don't always stay the same. I know that makes some people uncomfortable. But the reality is, is if you're in this business or any business, if you're not understanding or studying how it's going to change and how it's going to evolve, you're going backwards. You're losing. You're losing rope every single day. You are going to lose every single day if you're in this industry. And 
you're not having a better understanding of which direction it's going. And this means those that are in real estate, entitled and escrow and lending. It just does. Look at the structure in these industries right now. I'm going to speak to these right now that are reality. And if you're a consumer, you understand this if you've had these transactions. Let's first take the real estate industry. Most of them have large office spaces, nice office spaces. Most of them are in some of the most expensive real estate in different towns and cities and locations. The overhead is tremendous. The overhead is a tremendous amount of money in occupying a building that you're paying seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, twenty dollars a square foot for. And some of these buildings are ten, fifteen thousand square feet. So we're not going to sit here and do the math and do a P and L, but the logical way this is going, ladies and gentlemen, and as a consumer, you better understand this too, just with the effect of Amazon and everything else and the retail business is changing and shopping malls changing, a lot of these stores, the bookstores, I could go on and on, the things that are changing. Less and less of these industries really need the command and need the office space that we need. Same thing on the lending side. We're in a big building. We have a lot of people in the building. We're paying expensive rent. Title companies are the same way. The majority of the clients that I see out of every transactions that I do, maybe, maybe, one or two people, maybe 10% of people come in the office. And don't get me wrong, I ask them every single time, especially if I haven't worked with them before, I would love to have you come in and meet you. Where would you like to meet? Would you like to come in the office? I would offer them every single time. But 99% of the time, guess what they say? I'd love to. I'm really busy. Can we just do this on the phone? Can I upload the documents? Can I electronically send these to you? So you're not going to argue with a consumer that's busy and force them to come and see you. My point is, is this is what's happening in these industries, and it's not going to change anytime soon. There's not a need for the infrastructure that is currently in place in these industries. So the consumer is eventually going to benefit by this. You would say, how's the consumer going to benefit? Because as these industries change, we change the models. You don't have the overhead. What you have to do is you have to adjust to consumer needs. So I've said this before, I'll continue to say it. You're seeing an evolution, you're seeing a wave come through our industry where the consumers are demanding more of a better use of technology, lower costs, lower fees, better service, a better use of technology. We have to continue to deliver that. Now, the challenges that are going to come with blockchain that are very obvious, I'll go through just real quickly here, that we're going to have to overcome is there's compliance issues. Right There's big compliance and regulatory issues in this industry, in financing and real estate. You have to be very, very careful. There's money laundering. There's that, that, you know, when you're dealing with cryptocurrency, it's easier said than done. A lot of the government agencies have controls over the lending. The majority of lending is done by Fannie Freddie, which are, you know, government agencies. So this is not going to change overnight. There's going to have to be a melding of technology, innovation with government <laughs> and old industry, which is not going to be easy. You're talking about butting heads. You're talking about new industry coming in, new investments, new startups wanting to use technology and evolve. And what they're doing is they're going to be bumping up heads against regulatory environments, government agencies, and people that are doing things the same way, the same way for such a long time. And that's what they're going to be up against. And it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy at all. So those are the challenges. That's what's going to happen. We're going to see it coming, though. Don't fool yourself. The consumer, what can you expect is you're going to see a better use of technology with real estate lending, title, and escrow. And you're going to see cost, cost reductions, fees reductions. You're going to see a lot of flattening of those. It just is going to happen. It's going to happen more and more. And you're going to see transactions eventually quicker, cheaper, faster, and that's what really what the consumers want. So before I wrap things up again, just understand, I want to kind of summarize that this is not going to happen overnight, but it is going to happen. And from the consumer's perspective, I would encourage you to understand this concept and what's going on in the industry and that you, the consumer, deserve to work with the best team, people you trust, but also you deserve to get a competitive program and deal and structure in what you're dealing with today. 
I've said this before. A lot of people are just finding out now what they could get, what they could ask for, how the industry is changing, and how they benefit. So even though blockchain and cryptocurrency is going to take some time, I would say stay tuned. Educate yourself as much as you can. We'll continue doing that on this show. And I will tell you that as the industry changes, we'll evolve with you. We'll share this information with you. We'll help you walk through it. And we're going to give you the places to go, the people to work with, who are going to not only take the best care of you, but also be very, very competitive in what they're doing in their offer. You know, the most interesting dynamic, I would say, out of this real estate transaction is title and escrow. And let me speak to that just for a minute. So most people, when you understand title and escrow, understand that this is owned by large insurance companies. Title and escrow is run and operated by large insurance companies. And I was reminded just the last couple of days, and I, wanna, I don't want to go sideways here, but it has something to do with insurance companies. This is a pet peeve of mine. For years, these insurance companies charge you through the nose. They collect, they increase the fees, they charge you. You could have auto insurance, homeowner's insurance, commercial insurance for years and years and years. I have been a homeowner myself since 1987. 30 years I've been a homeowner, right? For 30 years. And I've never filed one claim. The percentage is what I'm getting at is these insurance companies make billions and billions and billions, that's a B, in profits every single year. But the minute we have a catastrophe, the minute there's fires or floods or anything else, what do you hear the state commissioner talk about? What do you hear the insurance companies talk about? You know what they say? Here's what they start talking about because they want to set the stage for what's coming. They start talking about how insurance premiums are going to go up because of these disasters. And insurance premiums, they're not going to cover certain people in California because they can't do it, because it's not affordable, because they're paying these claims. Yet they've collected billions and billions and billions of dollars over the last 20 years. This is the stuff that drives me nuts, and I know it drives most consumers nuts. No one likes to see disasters. No one likes to see fires. No one likes to see floods, but they happen. And guess what? When they happen to these poor people in their homes, they should be recovered with insurance. They should be provided insurance like they should, and they shouldn't be penalized on the other side of it just because there was a natural disaster like that. But this is what's happening. These greedy insurance companies make billions of dollars, and I'm sorry, I don't feel sorry for them every once in a while if they have to pay out hundreds of millions of dollars. They're not going to go bankrupt. They're not going to go bankrupt. What's frustrating is that they continue to raise these rates so that they can keep their profits intact. Believe me, I want everybody to be profitable. That's not the point. But I don't want it to happen on the back of consumers just because they've worked hard their entire life, paid their claims and their insurance, I should say, and then every once in a while when the claim needs to be paid, you get penalized as a consumer, and these, these natural disasters, you watch and see. Those of you in California, all of us in California, our insurance premiums are going to go up. And it's because instead of making $150 billion next year, maybe they make half of that. I'm making those numbers up, but you know what I'm getting at here. It's frustrating, and I think the regular consumer is frustrated by this. So what you need to do as a consumer is take better charge, make sure that you're getting the right coverage, make sure you're getting competitive prices for yours, and make sure when you have a claim, they pay on it. And the reason I want to talk about this, too, this leads into title and escrow insurance because insurance companies run title and escrow. Now, title and escrow companies serve a great purpose in our industry, ladies and gentlemen. Don't get me wrong, but this is a business conversation. And what I mean by that is if some people take it personal, I'm sorry. But no different than lending, real estate, title and escrow is one of the biggest culprits of an industry that's got to change, and it will change. It's going to take some time because they're insurance companies. And they have a lot of money, and they pay a lot of money to politicians, and they're lobbying all the time. But listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. In the United States alone, this title and escrow, this title service, this title business is a $16 billion a year market. $16 billion a year market. They provide a great service. But it's for an unreasonable price. It's for an incredibly unreasonable price. This is what this article talks about, and I couldn't agree more. 
In fact, when someone tells you, well, wait a minute, the reason you need title and escrow or title insurance, because what if you get a claim and what if there's a cloud on title and what if, well, you know what the stats are? Less than 5% of these revenues are in claims. In other words, they only pay less than 5% of their revenues in claims. So yeah, there's a couple, but percentage wise, there's almost none. My point behind this before I close out is that the world is changing, real estate is changing, blockchain is coming, cryptocurrency is coming. This industry has got to change. We will change. The consumers will benefit. The consumers will evolve. These are the kinds of things that are taking place in the industry. $16 billion for title and escrow in the United States and they call it here in the article, it's basically a legalized racket. <laughs> it's a legalized racket. 80% of people have a mobile notary that comes to their home or their office to sign them off. So why would you need hundreds of thousands of square feet of expensive buildings with expensive signs, paying people expensive salaries at all different senior levels, all the way down to the escrow offer, to the sales reps? Why would you need all that support for an industry that requires some title search and a title policy, and then for someone that's going to sign that doesn't need to come to the office and sign. This is the reality that it's all changing. And it's the same with lenders. It's the same with real estate companies in the sense of where the money's being spent and how the competition is changing for sure. All right. Unfortunately, we're just about out of time today. Just remember, if you want more information about the show, go to reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Dot com. Again, tomorrow's come back with us. We'll have Bill Benson, who's going to be talking about reverse mortgages. And then Thursday, we'll have Jack Russo back in the studio talking about starting something new in Silicon Valley and entrepreneurship and much, much more. Joe Kucher with Real Estate Radio Live. Thanks again for checking in. For more information, again, go to reradiolive.com. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.